איך היא היה שהיה בכיר המחבלים שפעלו אי פעם נגד ישראל? בטח בכיר אנשי החמאס. האיש שהיה מהנדס, הוא ידע להרכיב מטעני חבלה מחומרי נפץ מאולתרים. The six former heads of Shin Bet, or Shabak, reveal as much as spies are going to in this documentary, which attempts to shine some light on the shady world of Israel's internal security agency. These men are bred to evade, revel in half-truths. Director Dror Marer is going to have his work cut out. Every soldier of the army is in a picture of him. He was a member of the army, and he was a member of the army. Catherine, there's a lot of revealing detail about the dirty business of covert operations here, and it reminded me a little bit of Errol Morris's The Fog of War, which I think was quite influential in how the film actually got made, is that right? Yeah, no, that's right. I think he pitched it as a fog of war for this situation, and uh, indeed one of the gatekeepers had seen that film, loved it, and so agreed to do it, which is a really interesting sort of way in. Uh, and it is like that, and it is amazingly sort of exhilarating in a horrible way to have the lid lifted on something quite so quite a same century as this in this way. I think on the base level of documentary making though, you've got to remember that these guys are people who've made their livelihoods through never revealing anything. Absolutely. And it's being incredible. absolutely secretive and being obscuring at every turn. And yeah. now he's got these guys on camera just speaking very plainly about things like the bus 300 incident. These are things that haven't really been talked about from that top level of people. No, and we're seeing it for the first time. Absolutely astonishing stuff. And that's where it differs from something like I mean, one of the documentaries I've really loved over the past year was um, Joshua Oppenheimer's um, The Act of Killing, which does something similar with the people uh, who kind of executed the kind of Cambodian death squads. They, weren't, they didn't uh, authorise it, but they, they did it. Whereas they are, and they're completely frank in a very, very similar way, but of course it wasn't sort of so secret. Peter, this was nominated for the Best Documentary Oscar, alongside Five Broken Cameras, which showed a very personal view of the Palestinian side yes. of the story. Mm. Um, but it didn't win, it lost to Searching for Sugar Man. Could you kind of explain why? I, I think mainly because Searching for Sugar Man offered a much more emollient, easy, feel-good story. Uh, I, I had my problems with Searching for Sugar Man. I think it did that by sort of not giving us all the facts, to be honest with you. But it was, a, it was a very, very good film, and good luck to it. Movies like this, especially on hot-button uh, issues like Israel, make people nervous. Uh, they, they really do. Uh, even, and on P Palestine, that makes people nervous as well, however good people might secretly think it. And I think people are entitled to say, particularly with spooks and intelligence people and spies, thinking when, when they come out on camera, and allegedly start telling you the truth, you've always got to have a pinch of salt, no matter how compelling it is. So when five or six top-ranking people in Shin Bet start telling you the truth, well, it's fascinating what they're doing, but don't take it on trust. You can never take it on trust. Well, you can never take anything completely on trust at face value, but with intelligence people who never retire, you can never take it at face value. That's not to say it's not fascinating and brilliant and very authentic and, and very worthwhile, but you can't take it at first value. Retz Rabin cut out the Tikva. Who era, but so a bura beauter, she met Nakesh, Katan, Mustan, in Megdach, she because she yore, Yahol Liktoa, Tikvashlema, Talich Shalem, Yahole Shanot Kivud. 